We're here because we love music. You know, I enjoy writing and recording, and like you, I love listening. And I want to take you behind the scenes of how the recording of your favorite songs gets funded. Now, the music business began a revolutionary shift about 20 years ago. The inside story of how digital piracy changed the music business is told brilliantly in Stephen Witt's book, How Music Got Free. It reads like a mystery thriller. Now, where we've landed now is convenient for consumers, yet unsustainable and unjust for music creators. The streaming companies pay so little per stream that artists and songwriters get paid practically nothing from thousands of streams. Now, there is an ethical way to use streaming apps like Spotify. I'll share more about that in a moment. Paying for a music streaming subscription is kind of like hiring a playlist curator and personal DJ. You select a style or favorite artist, and the algorithm chooses songs for you. Lovely dinner music, fun cooking tunes. It makes sense that we should pay something for this service. But your $10 subscription is paying basically nothing to the music creators themselves. It goes to the company and the artists who are on the top of the charts. The rich get richer, while the Indian emerging artists get pennies, and mid-level artists get dollars doesn't have to stay like this. There are solutions and good options for us to act justly. All of us who enjoy the soundtrack music creators make for our lives can make tangible choices to show that we value music. You know, the best way is to purchase products directly from an artist's web store so that the money goes to them versus going to distributors and help them underwrite new products through platforms like Kickstarter and Indiegogo as a one-time contribution. We can also become patrons on platforms like Patreon and Give Monthly. I participate in all of these options whenever possible. And to clarify, I still use Spotify on my phone because of the convenience and the opportunity to try out new artists, new albums, and see if they resonate with me. However, I don't only use Spotify because I know I can't rely on Spotify to pay the artists that serve me. I complete the circle so that my streaming use is ethical. Once I realize that an artist's album moves me, I take the next step and purchase that album. To just stream their music and never purchase it is, in my opinion, unjust. And it has a real negative impact on them, their families, all the people whose livelihood depends on music creators being fairly compensated for their skilled and creative work. Now let me give you a, a recent example on how it can work. You know, one day I'm, I'm listening to an acoustic playlist and I hear a song that moves me. It's called The Brave One by Andy Gillihorn. I head to Andy's website and I purchase his album called Everything As It Should Be. I pay $10 for a digital download. I then import that purchase into my iTunes library on my laptop. And because I subscribe to iTunes Match, it automatically adds this album to my music app on my iPhone. This means I get the convenience of music on my phone and I know that I have acted justly towards Andy and all those who helped him record his album. You could also purchase Andy's album from the Apple iTunes store, but then instead of Andy making $10, he'd only make about half of that because the other half goes to Apple and whoever helps him place his album on the iTunes store, which is quite complicated from my experience. So for the albums that over time become one of my favorites, I purchase them on vinyl so that I can hold something in my hands. I, can re I love reading the lyrics, liner notes, enjoying the artwork at a human scale. So for everyone who no longer uses CDs, that's most of us, we still have a clear pathway to purchase music. You know, buying direct is the best way to support music creators in the same way that supporting local small businesses is the best way to shop ethically. Now, can you imagine shopping at a local organic farm and only paying a couple of cents for what used to cost $10, even though the farmer's production costs haven't changed? We would see that as outrageously unjust. We have enough awareness to know that if there was some sort of loophole that made that discounted purchase of produce for pennies legal, that farm would be going out of business very soon. That's like what's happened 
with music. It still costs tens of thousands of dollars to make a quality album, but now the return on that investment from streaming is so small, it's unsustainable. The future of music is in all of our hands. And I'm curious what my peers still have up their creative sleeves into their senior years. And I'm excited about what the next generation will create. And I want these up and coming artists to have a realistic hope that they can be paid for their valuable and important creative work. Together, we can act justly by paying fairly for the music that we consume. Thanks for listening and thanks for supporting music creators everywhere.